Hello and welcome to Greenfleet Talks. Uh, my name is Kate Armitage and I'm your host for our discussion today. And I'm delighted to be joined by Angus Webb, who is CEO at Dynamon. Hello, Angus. Good afternoon. <laughs> nice, to, nice to meet you. Uh, I think it's the first time that we've spoken. Um, uh, Angus, today you and I are going to be discussing electric vans, all things vans, uh, and the barriers to take up and the challenges around public charging. Um, so let's dive straight in here. We're all aware that the decarbonisation of vans is crucial to achieving net zero, as well as improving local air quality in our towns and cities. Uh, however, diesel vans still make up more than nine out of every 10 registrations in the UK. So the take up is slower than we would have hoped. Um, why is the adoption of electric vans slower than cars? Uh, and what do you see the barriers are that operators face? Um, so the major difference between, um, say, a consumer buying a car and a commercial company buying a van is that a commercial company is extremely cost sensitive. And, and therefore, the economics of electric vehicles are you know, really important to, to commercial companies, whereas a consumer who buys a car may buy an electric car because it's got it's got some fun features. It's a, it's a completely different experience. And I have an EV and I love it for the fact that it's an EV, whereas a commercial company has to make a profit from their vehicles. And therefore, um, understanding the economics of EVs and also the feasibility of running an EV fleet understanding the requirements of charging just means that commercial companies will take a little bit longer to purchase EVs over um, ICE diesel vehicles, for example. And so therefore, there are many cases where EVs save companies money, but that data is very difficult to come about. Oh, yeah. And therefore, a commercial company is just naturally going to face a little bit more of, a, of, a, of, of time to, to, to move towards electric than consumers would do. I think it's a, I think it's a really valid observation, Angus. And you know, ultimately, you're you're asking a fleet manager to to challenge the status quo and something that has worked very well potentially for decades, uh, and take a risk on something, um, but based on the total cost of ownership, uh, and and that business case is quite tight at the moment, isn't it? Um, Yes, it is. And so in some cases, EVs are cheaper, but yeah. in many cases, they're not. Uh, and therefore, um, until the TCO of, a, of an EV comes down, um, you can't expect a commercial company to, to make a decision to purchase these um, if they're going to harm their business. Of course, there are many other reasons to buy EV around clean air zones and obviously you know, yep. reducing your CO2 emissions as a company. But there, but there is ultimately a limit to how far a company is willing to go in terms of paying more money for an EV over an ICE vehicle. So it's yeah. really important to understand the differences. Uh, and in many cases, EVs actually do save money. So it's finding the, the, the situations where EVs help and then perhaps where it's EVs are a bit more challenging from a cost perspective, waiting because naturally things are going to get cheaper, waiting for the cost to come down. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely. Uh, I absolutely agree with you, uh, and it's even more complicated because um, my experience is that the cost of charging, particularly in the last eighteen months, um, has been extremely variable. Uh, and in fact, the cost of fuel is probably the factor that takes that introduces the level of uncertainty in that TCO. Be that diesel or uh, electric or even hydrogen for some of our fleets. Um, but when I think about the public charging infrastructure for EVs, um, yes, it's expensive, which is a negative point, but also um, it's not, in many ways, it's not fit for purpose for van users. Uh, have you got any ideas on how that can be improved? Well, on, on the TCO point, um, obviously, uh, 
EVs have a higher acquisition cost than, than diesel. But one of the major benefits of an electric vehicle is the lower running costs yeah. because they're so much more efficient, energy efficient than a diesel vehicle. And so that you can hope to make back that extra cost from reduced costs due to, due to electricity. However, that depends on how much you, you spend on the electricity to charge yeah. the vehicles. So when I charge my EV at home, my EV costs me about three pence per mile to drive. And my diesel vehicle cost me about 16 pence per mile to drive. So my EV is significantly cheaper. So the more I drive, so the higher mileages I do on my EV, the more I save. So EVs have this amazing benefit for high mileage operations. And that's the paradox. Often people think EVs better on short journeys, whereas actually the more you drive them, the more you save. However, there comes a challenge when you're actually spending um, very high prices on the public charging network to yeah. charge your EVs, and it can tip the TCO the other way. And so understanding the cost of public charging and the amount of public charging that you need to, to use to run your fleet will be very important to understanding the TCO of your fleet. And you really want to maximize the usage of private charging in depot or at home where you can get a really low tariff because that's where you're going to get the real benefits from a TCO perspective for EV. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if you're using private charging infrastructure, you've got much, much more control over the maintenance of that, the uptime, whether or not it's available when you need it to be available, which is some of the challenges with the public charging infrastructure, which at the moment is being shared with the general public who are driving passenger vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. if, if, a, if a charge point is in use, you, you, this, you don't know how long you're potentially going to have to wait for that, for that owner to come and, and clear that space. Yeah, obviously, public charging has its challenges, but it's yeah. improving all the time. And yeah. so, you know, a fleet isn't going to change. A big fleet, for example, isn't going to change to EV 100% overnight. And so, therefore, there's a journey. It's what should I do today? next year and then the years into the to the future yeah. so uh, public charging will improve i predict it will get cheaper it has to get cheaper but um but today you can still use public charging as well you just need to understand the extent to which you need to use it appreciate the cost of it and plan that in to your tco and we know fleets that don't have private charging for example they only use public charging because their customers stipulate that their vehicles must be ev yeah. Yeah, so yeah. therefore they, they've figured it out. The most important thing is that you're able to analyze the problems that you've got and how you're going to make EVs you know, fit your needs. And so doing that analysis uh, is, is really important. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Um, and uh, what about fleets uh, that have not yet begun their electrification journey? Um, how can they judge the viability of EVs for their operation, be that uh, at the, the, the actual range and payload or the TCO? So, so many people all over the world, whether you're a fleet manager or whether you're even selling the solution like a charge point operator or a, a, a leasing company or an OEM, has to what I call figure out EVs. You know, this is a data analysis problem, uh, ultimately, because you have a choice today. Do you buy diesel? Do you buy electric? Which EV do you buy? There's so much, so many options. Do I charge my vehicles in my depot? Do I only use public charging? What are the differences? And, and, and what are the changes that are going into the future? There's so much to figure out. Um, that's why um, at Dynamon, we have built, or we build the software that we sell to help make that analysis significantly easier and more precise. Um, you know, and our, our software is used by fleet managers themselves. It's used by consultancies so that they can provide their consulting services. But we're, we're here to service all of those people all over the world that are going to have to do all this analysis and to try and make that process uh, much easier. So what you can do is, first of all, by making sure you've got the right data. So understand your fleet, understand the ages of your vehicles, the mileages that they're doing. Hopefully, if you've got telematics data, make sure that that data is available to whoever's going to do the analysis and then link in a, a solution like Dynamon Software Zero to help that data processing just come together really nicely and be able to forecast when to go EV, how much it's going to cost, choose the right vehicles, understand 
charging infrastructure, whether you want to own your own charging infrastructure, and if, if you're going to be relying on the public network, how much, to what extent will you be using public chargers, and what is that going to cost you as an operation? So all of that analysis needs to happen. You're going to have to do it at some point. You're not just yeah. going to sleepwalk into an EV fleet. It's going to happen. So at least do it properly is what, what we would recommend. Yeah, I, and you're absolutely right. You're going to have to do this at some point. So you may as well start that analysis now. Um, and I, I like I like your comment very much about sleepwalking. Um, now, uh, possibly slightly broader, um, but what tips um, have you got for van operators to be more productive and efficient during the working day? I mean, one of the best things that we recommend is have telematics because telematics tells you what is actually happening in your in your um, in your fleet operation you may believe you know you may have a a good idea of what your vehicles do when they leave depot how long they spend in the depot etc cetera, etc cetera. but telematics tells you the range the variability of all of that and it's the variability which can sometimes cause problems in terms of how long are they actually in the depot? Sometimes they're only there for 10 minutes. That's not enough time to charge, perhaps. Um, and, and how often they, they go to the same site every day, whether or, perhaps you, or not you can utilize charging infrastructure in these locations. And so we always recommend telematics. It's a good way uh, to, to, to have quality data to make decisions as a company. Um, however, just even just other basic information, knowing your goals as a business are, do you actually want to go EV? Do you have ESG requirements that have come down from, from your perhaps your board of directors, your shareholders? And if they are making these commitments, how are you going to deliver on that? And so just trying to think of it as a in, in the big picture um, and then speaking with all of your suppliers and understanding the availability of product um, and whether they're going to uh, meet your needs. Um, and of course, um, you know, Use software to make the analysis much easier. We, we understand that fleet managers aren't data scientists and, you know, everybody's going to have to deal with data. You know, it's, it's, it's just an inevitable in the industry. So having tools that make that significantly easier and you're not grappling with that you know, re, very unpleasant Excel spreadsheets and trying to pull data together and make it all work, use the to right tools for the job is what we would recommend. Uh, great advice. Uh, and I've certainly um, s spoken to many a fleet manager who said, I, I thought I knew uh, what the fleet was doing, but then I get the telematics and I, I, I'm seeing a very different story, which is interesting. And your point about variability um, is absolutely spot on because um, it's quite dangerous to talk in averages or indeed to, to, to choose an outlier and make strategic decisions about your whole fleet based on the one or two vehicles that are particularly high mileage. Uh, so as you say, to, to get that data, get that telematics data and to get it into a software that puts it into a usable format um, will stand you in good stead, be that this year, next year or in five years time. So absolutely. Um, yeah, great, great advice, uh, Angus. Uh, extremely sensible and level-headed. Uh, so uh, I, I thank you very much for that. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Great talking to you. Thank you. Uh, that is about all we've got time for. Thank you to Dynamon for joining Green Fleet Talks. And thank you for watching. Please tune in to GF365 again soon.